Hey guys, so I want to go over briefly just making sure that your dog's really understanding what communication you're giving them through the e-collar. So I know a lot of the times people will be like, all right, well I've worked on place a hundred times or more on leash, they do it every time for food. Um, now they're doing it with e-collar, but they break if I'm just like hanging around and not actively training with them. So during the passive time, um, people will find that the dog will just get up. So what I always try to do with dogs is A, they need to know that I am like their leader and they need to listen regardless of if we're actively training or if we're not. Um, and Cider does do that with me. So like this morning I worked out, she hung out on place the entire time, no tie back. She did have her leash on her, just hanging off to the side, but stayed put. Um, it's because I've given her really clear information on leash, off leash, with e-collar of what this boundary means. So sometimes when dogs go home, they're like, I get free reign here, my toy's over there, I want that. Um, I know that this is when mom or dad is doing something that I can kind of get away with things. So um, we have to kind of think about it going back to basics at home of making sure you're giving very, very clear direction versus um, them being in a setting where maybe they broke place and you're yelling place back to them, the e-collar is back on, and then they're just like frantically trying to figure out what you want from them. So to make sure that she really, really knows the word without necessarily just leash guidance or my body pressure or food, I wanna make sure she clearly knows it with the e-collar um, and by the word place. So what I'm gonna do with her is I'm gonna have her release. I'm gonna do some really basic ones where I'm walking her through it, getting her kind of in tune with me of layering it on top of um, leash guidance, body pressure, and e-collar, and then I'm going to fade out any of my body pressure and leash guidance and go just to um, the e-collar, and then what I'm going to do is just use the word and then engage the e-collar if she doesn't listen. Again, I wouldn't be going to the correctional point of things if the, she was just learning this, but she's not. She's done this with me 100 million times, so um, I do expect her to understand what place means even without this, but I'm going to give her some extra guidance in the beginning just to make sure because she is still struggling at home with this. So if you hear me use a little bit of different commands with her um, than some of my board and trained dogs, it's just because i um, trying to stay consistent with what she knows at home. So her release word is take a break. Good. So I'm going to start short leash, sit. Good, I did not use the e-collar there. Um, I'm not gonna start with anything fancy. All I'm going to do is approach the place bed, get her on there with e-collar pressure and my body pressure, um, and into a down and see what she gives us. Let's go. Sit, nope. So she automatically wants to go on, come here. So I wanna slow her down, sit. Good. E-collar on, place. Good, down, good girl. So if you notice that your dog's trying to like guess what you're gonna ask them for, she's a smart dog, she knows that this is what we're gonna do. So she was immediately like, oh, I'm just gonna do this so that I can see if I can get the food reward right away, or I really like to please her, um, which I love the effort, but at the same time, again, we want dogs to start just to look to us for stuff versus guess what we want from them. Take a break. Good girl. So we'll try that again. Good. Place. Good. So right there, you'll see that I stayed stationary. I didn't give any leash pressure. I pressed the e-collar in and then I said place and she gave me a little bit of like, oh, okay. And then I gave her an opportunity to think through that situation. And then when she gave it to me, good and all pressure is released. I think we're so quick to be like, place, no, 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 place, like because we want our dogs to do it immediately, but through the learning phase, and even not through the learning phase, there's gonna be situations where your dog just needs to think of what you're asking them for. So she gave it to me, the pressure is released. Will she do that every single time? Probably not, but if she does, that'll tell me that I need to give her clear communication. So I'm gonna see how she does with me sending her to place, if you will, um, again. So 
And again, if you go to pick up your leash um, and your dog pops up, I would have said no and then given her e-collar information to go back into a down. And just for reference, I am working at a three out of 100 on the e-collar. Um, she feels it at very low levels. So if you're ever feeling like your dog's not feeling it or the collar's not working, check contact and check, uh, it needs to be snug. So it's just not, I mean, it, it's not something that you want to be able to move around your dog's neck. Um, and if it is really, really tight and you're still not getting contact, maybe loosen it a little bit and switch it to the other side just to see maybe you'll be able to get better contact. Take a break. Good girl. So again, going to approach, sit, good. Place, good. Down, good. So there, gave it to me right away. Pressed it in, I said place. She went on to it, all four paws. I released pressure. She didn't go into the down right away, so I did give her information through the e-collar with down because place means get onto the place bed and go into a down. Good. Take a break. All right, come from this side a little bit. Okay. Sit. Good. No. So she's anticipating, and I don't want her to do that. So I just want to wait her out until she's not going to be giving me that pressure. So all I'm doing when she's going to that is just giving her leash pressure to keep her off of it. I'm not using the e-collar at that point. Place. Down. Good. Good. So I think when you get dogs that are very eager and very smart, if they're giving you a lot of anticipation of like, I know what you're gonna ask me, then you need to up the challenge for them a little bit and slow them down. Um, I think so many people are like, oh, well, she's giving me what I'm eventually gonna ask for. It's like, that's great. And again, A for effort, but that's not what you asked for in this state right now. What I asked you for is a sit. And when sit is just stay there until released or given another command. So I'm gonna try to do that until she's not, um, anticipating it right away. Take a break. So I'm gonna come from a little bit different side. Sit, good. So I am starting to incorporate the e-collar more with the sit of sit, pressure's released when the tush goes on the ground. The reason I wasn't before is because she clearly knows sit, like there's no guessing if she knows that. But if it's gonna help her not get into such autopilot, I'm gonna try it. And then I marked it with good, and good means keep doing what you're doing. Good. So she's still a little eager beaver. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna wait her out and kind of try to give her that information when she's kind of least expecting it. Place. I'm gonna dial up a little bit. Place. Place. I dialed up to an eight out of 100 there. Sometimes people will see that and be like, she doesn't know it, she, she just doesn't know it. And there might be some confusion, don't get me wrong, but I also know that there's 800 smells. She's a puppy um, and she will, she's the type of dog that just sometimes doesn't wanna do what you're asking for. So instead of me immediately getting frustrated and be like, cider place, cider place, cider place. I just dialed up, repeated the command once and kept pressure on until she understood what I wanted from her. I did give a little bit of body pressure, which I'm sure you saw, um, by just kind of walking over here, like thinking like, hey, come on, follow me a little bit. But I still kept leash pressure off because she is a smart dog. So I want her to understand that, hey, I need you to stick with me, listen, and numbers will go up. Um, four things that you clearly know, but I need you to kind of dial in with me a little bit. So again, long-winded, but this is the type of stuff that you have to practice at home because, um, you know, sometimes it's just like, all right, we're doing place, good, all right, awesome. Now the dog's, you know, able to have the doorbell ring and people coming in and out. It's like, that is not how it goes. It goes like, we're gonna introduce it and at least just get the dog on the bed. And then we go through tons and tons of this, hours of this, before we even start adding higher distractions. So if your dog can't do this with you um, actively and 
be slow, not just guessing what you want from them, then you need to slow things down before you're going to think that distractions can be added in. Um, because when distractions come into play, you're doing more correctional basis. And then when you do correct, you have to know what to do with that correction. And that's going to be calmly giving your dog the direction to get back into command. So I like to kind of go through these types of things because I think that um, specifically if people are using the e-collar at home without a trainer or just doing some one-on-one -on -one sessions and stuff like that, the dog always acts so much different with us than they do um, back home. So this type of work has to be put in at home. Um, it's not going to be something where they can just do it a few times with the trainer and then they're never going to pop up because if I wasn't paying attention to her for call it you know, 15, 20 minutes and I'm in my kitchen and something more appealing to her was out there than staying in command. Well, shame on me for leaving a puppy that I know probably is gonna pop up um, for something that means a little bit more. So you have to just really, really take it in strides, but then also when your dog knows things, start holding them accountable. So this right here is like so much harder work for her than moving, 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 like she could do place, break, do like a hundred million times and she'd be like, okay, cool. She could do sit, come, place, whatever. But having to like think, slow down and then duration, like she's, that tires her out more than anything else. So here I go, just like um, rambling a little bit, but I just think it's important for people to see this kind of process because it's not always gonna be seamless and it's not always gonna be picture perfect. So when you're at home and you're practicing stuff like this and you're passively saying, I'm just sitting on the couch on my phone, like I expect her to stay and if she doesn't, then I'm going to um, go up a little bit and say no and then I'm gonna hold pressure back on and guide her to the place bed and show her what I do want from her. And that's gonna happen a lot until the dog really understands and you have to practice those types of things. So that's why I say like, practice real life before real life happens. So when you're actively training like this, go ahead and sit down for 10 minutes while you know your dog has to hang out and get on your laptop or get on your phone or take breaks where you're like walking to the other room and coming back and marking it with good um, just all those types of things, those little moments where you don't quite think mean a lot, they really, really mean a lot because we want to mark good behavior, um, but then also mark unwanted behavior with no and a correction. So um, we'll do a few more reps just so you guys can get a little good handle on what we're doing here. And I hope that this type of full long explanation helps you guys out. Take a break. Good girl. Good. Good. No. Again, I'm not mad when she messes up. Sit. I'm gonna go up a number a little bit. I'm at a four now. Good. Place. Good. Down. Good. Take a break. So I'll up the repetitions a little bit, a little bit quicker. Sit. You might notice if she goes to um, step on the place bed before me giving her that information, I might give a little bit more of a pop just because it's like, okay, we've done this multiple times now. You keep anticipating it. It needs to be a little bit more correctional basis. Place. Good. Good girl. And with her, she gets super amped on food, so I add it in once in a while. I'm not doing all luring with her because again, she just gets crazy on it. Take a break. Nice little lap. Sit, no. might have seen that she then like questioned if that's what she should do and I kept the pressure on she got on it I released and said good so those little moments that not everyone might see when they're working with their own dog when those happen it's really good when you can work through those so she is a dog that kind of I would say um, 
blows through prong pressure a little bit. So I might even switch her over to a slip lead and do some slip lead work, or I might use my body a little bit to get in front of her a little bit more. Um, she's just, you know, she's a sensitive gal in the e-collar, which makes um, life a lot easier because you can give her really clear information at lower levels. But the prong, she's just like, whatever. Um, so just some things to kind of consider that each dog is going to be different. Some with prong pressure would be like, okay, I'm not going to step on that right away. And some might be like, whatever, I'm just going to keep blowing through it. But um, yeah, I'll do this a ton more times with her. And this will be things again that she has to practice back home. But I hope this helps. Thanks, guys.